All right. Well, everyone, welcome back to New Amsterdam. City of Night. The city that sometimes occasionally takes a nap. How's everyone doing? Doing good. Pretty good. Excited to be here. Trying Dark to remember where exactly we left off. Well, what? does anyone want to make an attempt at a recap? <laughs> no, I don't remember a damn. I tried looking through the rolls to try to figure out. Isn't, didn't we just find that, that underground thing? Or was that the time before last? Where Victor was staked. Are we still where Victor is staked? Yep, that's the last thing we did. Oh, okay, so we're just still down in that room. Yep. I think we're talking about what we want to do with Victor if we want to leave him staked or unstake him. Yeah, you guys have a fairly big decision to start the session off with. Which I don't remember what we decided. Uh, you didn't. Ah, thank you, Ben. We we ended the session with everyone exploring the this underground lair slash library. And staring at, you know, a staked vampire on a desk in the middle of this, uh, this archive, you know, near a, uh, a thrown open coffin and having a discussion about what exactly the plan was going to be. I'm just saying want to maintain power, I think it best if maybe I don't know, he ran away with Monica I mean, either way, he's he, uh from how I see it, we already have his job the fact that he's staked in front of us means he fucked his job. So I don't think if we bring him back, we're going to lose our job. So I don't... I don't think that'll be a problem. I don't know if things are different in the uh, Camarilla than uh, gangs. I suppose it... It was all a matter of who he knows, and from what I can tell, he knew a lot of people. How long can he stay like that? I don't do know. we do Blake? He can stay like you're. You're asking how long he can stay staked? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as long as we live, so forever. We don't, we don't die. I mean, yeah, he's going to be starving when he finally wakes up. He'll just be fucking really mad because he'll be starving to pieces. He might wither away to, like, a skeleton, but he's not going to die. He's going to starve slowly while he's staked. He can't do anything about it. He's going to be miserable, and eventually he'll wake up and be real pissed. Correct me if I'm wrong, DM. No, nope, you pretty well described it. All those vampire novels are paying off. <laughs> so I, I really don't care what we do with him, but I mean, we leave him here. Eventually, he'll wake up, be pissed. We kill him the rest of the way. He'll be dead. We turn him in to the prince, and then you know, at least then we're like, hey, look, we're doing shit. Here's your guy. He didn't run off. He got stabbed by someone. We can give him to the sheriff. Sheriff, that's what I meant. Wouldn't mind watching that man work again. What do you think, Alex? I just said I wouldn't mind watching the sheriff at work again. I don't think I've ever spied somebody as swift with a blade as he. It is quite a view.
it would help to clean up the whole Victor situation, and it would put it out of our hands. Are we sure Monica skipped town and she's not staked somewhere mysteriously as well? As far as Wasn't the like, accounts of seeing her on a plane or something? That was the hearsay. Yeah, I mean, all the information you've gotten to this point is that when shit went bad, she she left. She ran. And I, I feel, I don't know, I, well, what if I feel like when we got that information, it was from a reliable source. Am I mistaken in that? It was pretty much every every piece of information had the same story. Like everybody said the same thing about her skipping town. I feel like it's really hard for multiple people to keep the same lie going. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's not doable. It's just, what's know. interesting though is like who is powerful enough to do this and make her scared enough to skip town? Too many people. Ooh. I mean, the Russians, isn't it? Like, weren't they? Aren't they like a big old mob? I mean, you piss off the mob, you're gonna have trouble. You maybe are supposed to be doing something for the prince. But insert the correct name here. Against the Camarilla, and as I understand, they have an unofficial alliance. Well, yeah, so it's like if something like that happens, then they run. We could squeeze the info out of this guy. He ain't gonna put up much of a fight. We pull it out. I mean, you might even be able to find the answers here in the aisles behind him without having to wake him. I think I did a roll to try to find stuff. And I rolled Yeah, I mean, in, in the, like, 30 minutes you guys have been down there, you've started, like, looking and just trying to get a feel for things. But there's a lot to go through, and it will take you a while to actually try to work through this and, and figure out what all is there. Is there any other exit other than the elevator? Not that you found so far. Uh, I'd like to make some investigation rolls. I don't know what it... Let me look at my character sheet real quick. Bye -bye. Um, I do like the idea of turning him in and proving ourselves. Like, hey, you told us to come in here and clean this shit up? Look, we found him. It does make us look strong. Or is bond. Can I do a wit survival to see if there's any other um, exits or any hidden uh, passages? Oh yeah, you can definitely uh, make a roll for that. Well, I've lost wits on my character sheet, so. Oh, wait, it's just the main one. It was survival. Come on, dice. Oh. Wow, dice. Wow, Big dice. Zero. I, don't, I don't think I've ever rolled a zero of this. I'm marking that. We're marking that. <coughs> Must be nice. <coughs> Man, I'm just going to say your highest roll was a three. But not Guys, a there ain't steel. shit back here. <laughs> That's true. It was not a bestial failure. <coughs> but yeah, all you're finding is bookshelf after bookshelf. You know, those like filing cabinet uh, boxes of books. The you know the sort of official record storage boxes. It just all kinds of that stuff. 
no no hidden anything that you you can see. Are there cameras in this room? Nope. Were there cameras in the room previously? In the nope. apartment? I mean, there were security cameras in the building. But you didn't see anything like that on the penthouse apartment. Is there anything the guy's working on before he got staked? But he got staked at his desk like he got surprised, right? I mean, you definitely think there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of a struggle in here. You you managed to uh divine that. Uh and he is like laid on the desk and has been staked to it. Uh but you don't know whether he was like at the desk and got caught or whether he was in the coffin and got caught. Should we pull the stake out or just take him to the sheriff? The sheriff's not much for words. Not so I much am. sure I want him talking too much. I am a little bit curious about what he might have to say. All right. Blake? You look over and you see that Blake is completely absorbed in a notebook. <laughs> Sorry, this one's very intriguing. It's uh, in incredibly informational. What, what were you saying? I apologize. You think we should unstake Victor? Uh, or just take him to the sheriff? I just want to take him to the sheriff. I mean, like, yeah, it might be information, but I bet the sheriff will ask you questions, too. I mean, I don't know. It's... Last time we met the sheriff, he didn't say much. Because my concern is that he's going to be he's gonna be insanely angry if we unstake him, which is also gonna make him stronger because he's going to be more hungry and that 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 like internal rage will take over. And I mean I know there's a lot of us, but I just you know, I really don't like to put myself into dangerous situations and I know we could get information, but also like Correct me if I'm wrong, DM. There are a couple books here that have no information on them, but they are names. And so we do have leads, and I feel like he's not going to give us more information than the names that we have from the information missing in these notebooks. Yeah, I'll, I'll sort of refresh you on what you found down there. Uh, the things that it caught your interest in this early, you know, skim of the of the archive were some binders that had names some of what you were familiar with written on them uh, you found one that was like you could tell that pages or things had been ripped out of it and it was labeled a sokolov you found another one that had been like thrown to the side that was labeled Sphinx, one that was labeled Ryu Fujikaga, and that's the one that uh, Blake has been so interested in. Ryu what? What was the last name? Sorry. Fujikaga. Fuji? Fujikaga. Hell yeah. Oh. I'm... Okay. So to the sheriff? Maybe we don't be so hasty. Let's... How much time do you think we could afford to actually spend down here? Like... As long as we want. For example, Who's gonna stop us? Could we sleep down here comfortably, safely, and keep looking around? Spend a whole night here? 
I don't see why not. Like I said, who's going to stop us? Who's going to, I mean, I see that he got staked, obviously, but I feel like whoever came here came and did what they were going to do and they left. I don't feel like they're going to immediately come back. And if they do, we'll be here, ready. One of us can stay awake and, you know, be ready for it. You can't stay awake. Yeah, I mean, Bla Bla Blake would know that. We'll be fine. We're going to be fine. We can block the door. We'll be fine. There's an elevator. As long as we keep the key in it and opened, it will keep it open on this side and no one can come down here. Rain, you look. You were looking around. Did you find another way out? Nah, there ain't shit back there. But I, I don't know. There's just a bunch of bookshelves everywhere. I didn't really look that hard. I got distracted. There's a porno mag. Okay, that was brutally honest. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, everyone look around. Double check and see if there's any other way. If there's not, we'll just barricade the door, and then we'll sleep down here, and we'll give this place a good, thorough search. And then we could take it, because we don't want to make the mistake of taking him in right away, and then them taking this away from us. Because he could tell them all this is down here. And then the what if he just stays missing? Huh? I like your original thought. What if he just stays missing? I see it two ways. Like, I like the idea of spreading a rumor that he skipped town and then maybe us turning him ah no because then if they pull the stake out he'll tell them how he went down that won't work i'm trying to see how we can get the most use out of him just can I feel like so long as he remains staked he's the complete wild card can i make some kind of like i have three dots in politics can i make some kind of politics intelligence check to kind of Maybe get a hint on like what the most politically advantageous thing to do with him is. Sure. Ooh, I liked it. Three ain't bad. No, three's not bad. Three's good. He's better than zero, homie. <laughs> so you guys start sort of banding ideas back and forth. You know, do you turn him in? Do you unstake him and interrogate him? Do you just finish him off and say somebody else did it? Like, what? And you've, you're looking around. Blake, you're looking at some of these things, especially on the, the names of the people that you know that, like, they're, there are Camarilla members that you've seen. There are, you know, elders in the Camarilla that have binders in here. Some, you know, are have been like looked at and then just discarded. Some are still on shelves. You know, it's but just about every meaningful name in the city, or at least this part of the city or in the Camrya is in there along with dozens of other names that you don't quite recognize. You feel like what you knew about Victor at the beginning is that he and Monica as a team sort of kept this part of the city under control. And just based on what you've seen in the, the binder about the you know, the elder of your clan of clan Toreador it is clear that this guy was a collector of information you know much of it rumor mongering but anything that he thought might be useful to him he kept and 
there are things in here that could potentially be embarrassing to members of the Camarilla. You know, if he has similar information on human political figures in this part of the city, this is prime blackmail material. And you're looking around thinking this this sort of information could easily be used by anyone who has it, not just him. So it's both a weapon and a hazard. As you are sort of discussing all this, the idea comes to you that you have no doubt you, you could make a plausible case that someone, possibly someone you don't like or want to throw suspicion on, would have turned on him or have made a strike against him specifically because of the kind of information he was trying to collect. So, politically, you could pin this on just about anybody. So we could take down someone big if we wanted to, even if they weren't responsible. And you could make a plausible case. The question becomes, depending on the target you pick out, they... And how to put it, if you... If you target someone that's in a stable position in the city, in the Camarilla, wherever, and try to pin it on them, you will have made an enemy, and you and the information that's here may not be enough to protect you. We'll say it was the sheriff. <laughs> we could become information brokers. But... And everybody make me a Arcana check. <laughs> Thank you for I'm the video. I'm trying to think of the class. right uh, the right skill combination here. Everyone make me an investigation and intelligence role. Is there any way I could substitute investigation for larceny? Nope. Okay. One on one. Okay. I mean, everyone got at least a success, and most people got two. So you. You know, you have that is like, let's just sort of quickly get the names of like the big players that we're aware of and see if we can't pull just like what kind of information Victor had on, you know, Camarilla elders, on major political figures in the city, that kind of stuff. And you see that the information on those individuals is fairly skimpy. But no. the only ones that have been taken are for figures that you associate with the Russians. Okay. That, that's a lot of information then. That's who he was feuding with. That's whose information is missing. That's who sent any, somebody to kill him. Any chance that, like, there's a notebook for Maxwell Clark or like Chris Fox. Yep, those names are in there. Is there any information about the lady who uh, turned me? Do you know her name? Nope. So, Blake, why do you suppose Sphinx's binder is ripped out among the others? I would assume because he's a part of. 
who didn't want his information out there. I mean, why would you take someone's in either the person who did this what has it out for Sphinx and wants that information, or Sphinx was the one responsible for it and didn't want his information in here. Or Sphinx stabbed him in the back to get the information back. Exactly. It was either Sphinx or it was either someone who was also out to get Sphinx. Just because of how many Russian binders are here, I have suspicion Sphinx could be working with the Russians. Sphinx was the first one that we really talked to. That's who Clark Maxwell brought us to, right? Yes, and I may have misstated. Sphinx's binder was pulled out and open, but it still has information. Oh, in it. still full. Okay. Oh, okay. It's just who was getting looked currently looked at. Never. Oh, never mind. Those are that's the one next to it. My bad. Yeah, Sphinx Wouldn't is cool. Wouldn't that be crazy though? <laughs> Just, you know, devil's advocate. Okay, I guess Sphinx is cool. Is there any information about the Russians that they might have missed? That will take you longer to figure out. Well, or is the plan to stay here all night? Or is that what we figured out all night? Well, that that's kind of... This is part of the idea generation about like what do we do with victor okay. so the ideas you've come up with are pinned on somebody uh you know just and again the there is there is plenty of political capital to be gained just by turning him in but then you have the wild card of what happens when he gets unstaked you're absolutely correct in in considering that a toss-up as to you know who knows what happens then but you're starting to put a picture together of what you think happened. I say we toss him in the back stake. I mean, I'm sorry, what, what did you say? So long, no one's found him. Like I said, if we just put the key in the elevator to keep it locked down here, then nothing could come down here either. Isn't there like a key on the door on this side for us to call back the elevator? We do that. We just leave it in the locked position. We're stuck down here. I mean, whoever has the other key, but still, as long as the key's in here, the elevator's not going to go to that one until it's done with this one. I'm in no rush to determine this guy's fate. Yeah. We can sleep on it. Yeah, I mean, quite literally, he he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he When... When a vampire gets staked like that, they effectively just become a dead body. And they don't rot in the same way that an actual body would. But it's like when when the sleep comes over you in the daytime. It's like you just... They're just out. Alright, I got... I got kind of a crazy idea. What if we, uh, what if we unstake Victor and keep him safe? Protect him from the camera. What? Like, what if we tried to get all buddy buddy with the guy? To what end? Information. It's all he's good for. <clears throat> he was so good at it, it got him killed. We already have his information. I'm sure he's got more than just what's written down. But just a crazy idea. I don't I just spitballing. I like throwing him in the back of the room closet, personally. And I don't know if there's a broom closet a closet down here, but I'm gonna start dragging him to the closet. Sure, there's definitely a closet down there somewhere. Okay, right, I'm gonna go um, set him in the closet gracefully as much as possible, kind of like <laughs> lumping a dead body. Just, um, I'll at least move the broom if there's an mop. I'll move those out. It could be his little uh, hidey hole. What What you actually find is that there's a uh, a freezer down there, and 
you open it up and it's full of like pints of ice cream. I like their style. And you see, uh, you stand him up in the in the corner and uh, close the door, waiting for some poor twelve year old to come open the door and have the body fall on him. <laughs> That's not ice cream. <laughs> Ah! You didn't realize that you had a portal to the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so once you've done that, and now that you guys are pretty well committed to like digging through the information, what sorts of information or what sorts of things are you most interested in trying to uncover down here? information if there's any leftover information on the Ruskies. Okay. Why what else? Them Ruskies? Where uh, is that I from? I guess I would be interested in uh, who's are, like I would be trying to figure out if there are any other besides Fink's uh, Camarilla members who are missing. So that you can see, like, okay, was there anybody else that might have been working with the Russians that we can, in, like, investigate? Like, because I know we got, so I've got Ian, no, yeah, Ian I, or Ian L, I, let's have folder. Oh, I have Ian question mark. It's I, let's have, and I, or Zaitsev. Like said, have, yeah. Question mark, Ian. Um, and then I said, uh, I think it's Ivan Zaitsev, the Baron of Genbot. Wait, do we know it's Ivan? I think so. Or at least his binders ripped out on the floor, I think. Doesn't it just say I Zaitsev? It does I just say I Zaitsev, but Blake has heard of Ivan. Got it. It's the leader of the Anarch Anarch faction? That is correct. We're going to fight him in a boxing match. For, for America. America. <laughs> <laughs> so Sphinx's folder is... was being examined? It we appears that way, yes. We found it. I don't... Does that mean Sphinx no. is in trouble? Can we see what page it was Nobody open to? Like, well, what's the information? Yeah, on like, the are page? they going to try to fucking stake Sphinx next? Also, how long ago did Victor go missing? Because Sphinx has been out in the open for that amount of time as well. Yeah, it's and been like a not... month. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been about a month. Sphinx, again, you guys know having had a little bit of dealings with him, and Blake certainly knows this. He, as a Nosferatu, sort of specializes in information. You know, they, the, the clan has a reputation for being both hideous and extremely stealthy because they have to hide themselves. And so they are almost by default assumed to be the spies of the organization. a spies folder say uh it has again lots of rumor lots of so and so told a story about this and it all tends to revolve around things like sphinx was routinely seen at this place and that's probably a front for 
you know, an information gathering activity or for, you know, to disguise meetings to get information. There seems to be a fair bit about trying to pin down where his lair might be. Uh, you know, just sort of like there's a map of the part of the city where uh, Sphinx's bar is. Uh, death toll. And there are, you know, a number of places that are sort of, you know, circled and with question marks. And there's also... Do any uh, of those correspond with, like, any of the... Because uh... Death Mark's not on our map right now, right? Yeah, Death Toll's in a different part of the city. Oh, okay. So then, okay, never mind then. Uh, but, you know, it's you're seeing that kind of stuff. And uh, you do find a binder on uh, Gareth. And that one is more just kind of a list of executions. Is there a lot? There's a decent number. Is there any information about personality? About maybe his likes? Maybe a way to get to know him? Uh, there's some. Uh, you know, the... The information there is more about, like, people just will not cross him because they know he's got the backing of the prince and he enjoys his job. So he is, it's like he doesn't have to go out of his way to scare people. He just scares people. Yeah, I get that. And in that sort of, you know, it, it, it's almost like the stories are more about, I don't know how he ever knew or how he ever found out, but he showed up at this place and took out these guys who were, you know, scabbing. You know, he, his informants somehow knew that this lair was being, you know, teched out against the rules and the, you know, the inhabitant came back one day and found the place burning. You know, it's those kind of things. It's, it's the rumor about just how scary and how on edge people are because he always seems to know where to be to find people. That makes me nervous. And is the only information I'm looking for on the prince is a name. The prince's name. And it's it's not like it's listed as prince. Uh, there's just... It's just a symbol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the name on a relatively slim volume is Lucian Gray. And... Oh, fuck yes. I don't know if you know this. My last name's Gray. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, me and this dude are cousins. I mean, I'm spelling his last name like my last name, even if you spelt it differently. You can't change me. How oh, that's how you spell it. <laughs> well, excuse me. It's Lucian L U C I E N. Ah. L U C I E N. That changes everything. Yep. See, Jeremy, you changed the wrong A. <laughs> and 
this notebook again has just a very little bit in there and it's almost like a a mini biography but you know it's like Ooh. it's like seeing a wikipedia page terry wants to read uh, that whole goddamn thing because he doesn't know this information sure let's do a group reading the terry can read as it out you... loud to everyone while they <laughs> sift through information okay so it's I, I don't have a actual like document to give you you but... haven't written a book about this fictional character ben what the fuck <laughs> no ali did that <laughs> uh, oh is this actually one of ali's characters Every character you guys haven't made up is one of Allie's characters. Oh, fuck yeah. Wait, what about Gracie Lou Freebush? Does she blur the no, lines? No, we made that one up. Yeah, you guys <laughs> made that <laughs> So, Lucian came to power in the city in the year 1872. Over the last hundred years, he managed to establish New Amsterdam. Wait, before the Civil War. No, it's not. No, it's not. When was the Civil War? Like 1862 to 1866 or so. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> not before the Civil War. That's just the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, I mean. 1861 to 1865. Okay, it wasn't that far off. Seven years. Okay, it was close. It's just like yeah. that's the Civil War. <laughs> yeah, he's a vampire. Hey, we're in the north. We're cool. He's just been in. He's been a, in power for a long ass time. Is all I'm saying. He's old, and he has been molding this city ever since. He has steered it clear of any of the major upheavals of the vampire world. The city has remained strongly Camarilla, but there has always been, just like so many other places, some element of an anarch presence. The Camarilla did not fracture to the same extent as some other cities in recent decades. His, his style of leadership is more technocratic and less dictatorial. You know, he firmly believes in holding to the Camarilla's tenants. But he also knows that power is its own reward, and sometimes things have to be done subtly, and sometimes things just have to be done. So he's just a person in power. Oh, he's... More than that. So he, you're saying he does things to keep his power. That makes sense. And he has a... He is not seen much. When he is, he is almost always in the company of at least one other elder. He has a, you know a core of retainers around him. Is there and... any information about how old he might be? Because I know he, like, arrived in 1872, but that doesn't necessarily mean he... Didn't... No, no, no. He didn't arrive in the city in 1872. He, he took power in the city. Oh. Wow. Any info about maybe age? Uh, no specific age. But uh, the guess 
is that in, in vampire terms, where you guys are twelfth generation, uh, the estimate is that he's probably more like a ninth generation vampire. And has was probably floating around the uh, the old world uh, about the same time that the colonists took off for America. So, Any. would Terry be able to be like? I don't know. I'm trying to think of like. So, if Nick all of a sudden found out that like Chicago was shaped or you know New York was shaped by vampires I think the first thing I'd be like so like 9-11 was that you guys like I'd like I would like start like actually questioning the real world history of the place and being like wait so what was vampires and what was it like what was what started that great fire really yeah and those are some excellent questions that serial killer like in the forties, well, who was that guy? A vampire? So was Jack the Ripper actually a vampire? <laughs> um, and in, in in our game, he absolutely could be, but you just wouldn't have any evidence of it. <laughs> There's got to be a binder in here somewhere. Keep looking. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, so if you look at the uh, the character or the, the core rule book on page 137, uh, there are references in here to like generations and rough time spans. So you guys, as 12th generation, would have been embraced within the last 15 years. Possibly as old as the 1940s for, like, particularly old 12th generation vampire. A 10th or 11th generation would go back as far as 1780. So I, I know the blood gets diluted with generations. What if like a second generation dude like bites a random guy off the street? Is he a third generation or is he a twelfth generation? Third. Wow, that's cool. And and this is where, I mean, I this is one of the reasons I find the vampire game system so fascinating. I have some of the like vampire lore books that actually touch on that kind of stuff. Your characters wouldn't know it, so I, I can't really tell you about it right now. But we can, and, and we I like this <laughs> lore. <laughs> tell me, please. <laughs> the Raid's an idiot. He doesn't need to know. <laughs> yeah, the the legend is that the original vampire is the biblical Cain. Like the curse that was put on him for killing his brother. Fuck that was... long ass time ago. Yeah. But long, that was long time ago. The uh... galaxy not so far away. <laughs> Cain was killing his brother Abel. And then he grew sick ass vampire teeth. And then his dad Adam said, Son, I think you fucked up. I'm gonna have to ask you to get out of here. Where's your brother? Am I not my brother's In the keeper? End, my brother died. So, after that, uh, Cain turns a few and effectively vampires control the world up to the, the flood. Like, the flood. And any vampire that existed before that time is called an antediluvian. And that gets you to like, I think the fourth or fifth generation. And 
those is are also the fourth or fifth generation is who was around at the time of the great flood yeah got it so methuselah is probably a vampire okay uh, in fact they're called some of the oldest ones are called methuselahs i nailed it <laughs> look who paid what? attention in seminary what uh what generations were about when jesus was crucified wait hold uh, on the... i could do this so if fourth was from the time of adam to the great nope. flood that means that from that point to jesus is probably another four or five i want to say no i want to say it. seven Somewhere in that in that range would be a, a reasonable guess. Again, it, it all depends on who sired who and when. Quick question. So going back to my original question, like if a uh, uh, second gen bit a dude off the street and he'd be a third gen, would the third gen be as powerful as a third gen who's been around for a couple thousand years? Uh, I mean, yes, from a raw potency standpoint know from an actual knowledge of how of like what all can be done okay it's just okay that's cool vampire school i'm having fun with the system so if you look on page 47 there's a a little brief history here about ancient and contemporary outlooks and the Again, going back to the biblical stories, Enoch uh, was the originator of the blood cursed clans. So, like the the clans, the Ventru, the uh, the Malkavians, the the Toreador, all those. There, at one point, they were all like thirteen, for thirteen, quote unquote, like siblings, if you will. And that's when, like, the characteristic blood traits were sort of locked in for those clans. But yeah, the... Uh, again, just for you guys to know, not your characters to know, there's something going on in the vampire world right now called the Jihad. And the older vampires are being drawn back to the Middle East. Like they don't, it's just like this call that they feel, this, this compulsion to go there. That's cool. So um, when the tribes got together and like, did they separate into tribes because like, oh, hey, you're kind of wolfy. I'm kind of wolfy. We should make Gangrel. Or did like Gangrel separate and then the community, like the Gangrel tribe just developed all their traits? No, it's more like, and again, they don't actually know the names, but it's more like Gangrel the vampire it's, had these certain characteristics. It's like the tribes of Israel. Yes, very much so. Okay. Okay. I know a scary amount about this crap now that I think about it. But I you know how much I remember from that. Like God, so much. Anyway, religions. I don't know. Religions. Eat. Yeah, but not when they taught it to you. Like when they're actually trying to. Like it's one thing to do it because you think it's neat. It's another when they're trying to indoctrinate you. Well, all religions kind of trying to indoctrinate you. But yeah, but when like you're like on the outside looking in is one thing. When you're actually in it, it sucks. Well, here yeah, you're gonna I might like have this. my own issues with it, Jeremy. It's okay. <laughs> so, you were asking kind of like, how do you know what was the real, what was like humans and what was vampires? Yeah, just assume uh, anything was vampires. Well. Here's, here's the, the Punic Wars. 
were a mortal symptom of the bitter strife between Ventru and Malkavian elders, masquerading as patricians of Rome on one side and utopian dreamers led by the African Bruja on the other. Sounds hardcore. Sounds like a lot of the great wars in history are actually just vampire wars. What about the world wars? And the Inquisition? The Inquisition? Including the original Inquisition. I'm curious about World Wars as well. If, like, vampires had anything to do with that. I mean, vampires certainly have a role to play in that, you know, they are powerful entities behind the scene. I like how it mentions capitalism was a boon to them as well. (laughs) Yeah. That, That one made me laugh. But at the same time, uh, people are perfectly capable of getting themselves into their own problems. And the... Vampires are happy to capitalize on said problems. Yes. So it's not like every single thing is laid out as to, well, this was done by vampires, this wasn't. But I would say in this, in, in our game world, the World Wars were perfectly human just with vampires taking advantage. Okay. But, uh, and you guys will appreciate this one, the recent uh, War on Terror is as much a cover for humans striking out against vampires as it is a legitimate attempt to deal with terrorist human organizations. Because what better cover to go after you know, things that go bump in the night than a asymmetric warfare? We have to be, you know, everywhere, secretive and everywhere. Yeah. So that's where the second Inquisition comes in. And that's the other thing you guys need to keep in mind as we go through this is that basically every single one of you, the first encounter you've had, the first major issue you run into in the vampire world is the second inquisition I mean Terry's already had a Terry and Rain already had a run in with them and we all did <laughs> yeah. fuck those guys I just want to ask you a question yeah as, as both players and as your characters if the Russians took out Victor, who took out the Russians? And how did they know? The Russians got taken out? Well, A. Sokolov did. He got taken out. We got told by the Second Inquisition. Oh, Ace was your sire, wasn't he? Yeah. And he got taken out by the Inquisition. Well, now I don't think it's the Russians at all. I think it was the Prince. It always goes straight. I'm turning into a... (laughs) What if it was Monica? Why would she leave then? Why do all this and then just bail? What if she didn't bail? I mean, she could probably be in on it. That's why she bailed, but we still don't know who was behind it from the get-go. It could have still been the Russians, and they just threw Ace under the bus. As in, a, maybe an appeasement towards the prince? Because they don't want to go into open warfare. So many questions to answer. I think my headset cut out. I don't know. Right now, I don't think anybody else is talking. Oh my god, my headset, please work. Is it working? Can you hear me? <laughs> I mean, I can no. We've been Nobody knows. Oh, oh, I don't know. It kept cutting out. Oh, um, well. 
Is it the... Uh, I mean, the sun's got to be about to come up for tonight, so let's... Let's at least just barricade ourselves in here. Lock and, down the elevator. Oh, and yeah, that's that's totally cool, but very cool. You know, you'd ask, you want to know something about the prince, you now know stuff about the prince. Uh, I forget what else was requested for information. Was there... So Sphinx's folder was out. The Russians' information is missing. Oh, well, just any leftover information about the Russians, but I think you gave it to us. Um, and... Terry wants to look up uh, anything related to, like, names he actually recognizes from the human world. Like... Terry wants to be like, okay, so names that I know in politics and in power in the city, how much of that is connected to vampires? Okay. So, as you're doing a scan, because you know, I want to say you've got three or four hours of, of yeah. easy, you know, perusing time before the and, sun's going to come Terry's up. Terry's a studier. Like, you know, like he's got an intelligence of three. Like, he, he's a studier. So you just start, you know, kind of going through the shells, and, and you're starting to pick up on a little bit of organization here and there. Like, you can see that there's sort of a collection of human political figures on a couple of shelves in one part of the, the archive. And it's a lot of names you recognize from, you know, police captains, uh, people in the local, you know, town the local city council type positions, those, those sorts of things. There's, you know, several different, uh, several different individuals and groups that you recognize. So with, because I have three dots in my politics skill mm -hmm. in the book, it says that means like I can kind of organize like political movements and stuff like that. Like yep. both in vampire world and out, like, with both Monica's information and Victor's information, can Terry really start actually making a plan for how to manipulate the strings of power in Richmond? Oh, absolutely. Cool. Like, and that's what I was about to tell you. Is like, what as you start looking into this, there's as a human, you look at this, or as a you know recent human. You look at this and think, oh, man, like, this guy's cheating on his wife. You know, this person's been buying drugs from this place for, you know, years. Uh, you know, that guy, you know, basically had a, uh, a fraudulent uh, business organization set up, and he's money laundering. Like, there are legitimate crimes... What does he there have are the owner of this building. <laughs> Ooh, excellent. The owner of this building uh has been quietly for years uh skimming off the uh the taxes. You know, he's basically got he's bribing city hall to fake the records to show that he's paid up on his taxes and is, you know, basically pocketing a fair bit of, of income on top of the rents. So we kill the landlord. No, we blackmail him. No, this isn't rain. This is Jeremy. So we kill the land. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We should murder the fuck out of this landlord, but no. <laughs> We're bad guys, Rain. I I didn't think we were bad guys, like that bad. I mean, Jeff Bezos evil? Come on. I mean, how many levels of humanity has he got left? <laughs> well, I'm but just yeah, saying, I mean, if 
at some point this landlord is going to not have heard from Victor in a while and is going to come poking around. So if we can assume Victor's identity to the human landlord, then we can keep this apartment and this place and we could keep it under wraps. Oh, that's a good idea. And that'll that'll keep this from getting investigated. And then we'll have our own little, we'll have a both a safe house and a trove of knowledge. In fact, I wouldn't mind it if this was Terry's place. If that seems be... to fit Terry. <laughs> Political headquarters. <laughs> yeah, but the only problem is we know somebody else knows that this place exists. Is the only problem. It sounds like we need better security. There's got to be like a vampire security service out there. I think I know a guy <laughs> back at our headquarters. <laughs> oh my god, Bishop. Bishop just turns into like vampire ADP. Not ADP, but uh, what, what ADP. What do you want, dog? The guy behind the screen. <laughs> He's just always. I mean, if we're going to defy the Camarilla, we might as well defy the Camarilla. Because <laughs> I feel like Bishop would keep us safe from the Second Inquisition. Well, let's, let's remember something. The Camarilla has no problems whatsoever leveraging humans' use of technology. They just aren't going to put things that are important to the Camarilla in an electronic form that can be snooped. So, could, you know, the... We could, could we hypothetically give Lucas a stream room slash command center down here or uh yeah like either down here or up in the main apartment and like have that be where his character is and if he ever wants to come hang out sure i, mean, I thought he was setting that so that up for himself in the bodega but yeah but this would make more sense than the bodega for him because like the bodega doesn't make sense for like all the power to be going there and the good internet and all that stuff like this would make way more sense for his character. The bodega needs an entrance. In it. Say that again. You broke up, Jeremy. Now your headset might be going. He said the bodega needs an entrance to the sewers. Because <laughs> I feel like, because the cool thing too is if we have the bodega and this place, like those are, we're spreading out across. Uh, our territory. Our influence is I mean, they're, they're at least 40 feet apart. Well, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if, we, if we keep expanding across, like, our influence, right? It's not bad. I like it. It also gives us a place, like, if we have to get someplace quick to get away from the second position or something like that, we'll have more than just one place, especially if the bodega goes down. And now we have a means of focusing some of our questions for the next couple of red dots on the map that we investigate. I'm also hungry. I thought you ate a sandwich. <laughs> There's ice cream in the freezer if it's in shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't you miss ice cream? I just got vanilla in prison, and I miss it with all my heart. It was everything. But, I don't know. Dudes are pretty tasty. Weird. 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 Uh, but no, in-game, Terry is hungry. I have, I have two hunger in-game. <sighs> Do you still have that girlfriend in the motel? 
Or... She hangs out at the Black Cat from time to time. I think I could bump into her. How about it, Blake? You in the mood for to go dancing? Or you could come eat with Rain. I'll take you to my favorite spot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got the image of me taking you to the underpass and just be like hey look at this buffet and it's just a homeless camp i have considered <laughs> changing terry's feeding style have you ever seen twilight <laughs> i don't know man that was such a like, this is such a good moment for me in this campaign. Uh, right. You're folding your laundry as she wakes up. Hey, girl, you ever see Twilight? Any other questions about what's down there? I think I'm... I'm good. I mean, I'm sh if it, if we ha if we maintain access to it, we can ask you if something we think of something. I guess. Oh, since I created the character, is there any information related to Clark Subway, heir of the Subway Sandwiches fortune, and owner <laughs> of the New Amsterdam Midnight? There definitely is. <laughs> Clark Subway is. Uh... He has a, a reputation as being a bit of a player. And, you know, he often brings uh, young and attractive women to the uh, the VIP box with him. But the information that uh, Victor's managed to collect is that he spends a fair amount of time uh, sneaking off to underground clubs uh, of a more uh, BDSM slash uh, rainbow variety. Interesting. That is information Terry can use and possibly abuse. <laughs> or okay, so I need everyone except Rain to make me a uh, search. What was it? A survival and uh, wits. Is it because I rolled zero? That's fair. And I did. Is it investigation I... or survival? And I kind of like his his approach about if yeah, you're looking for hidden like stuff. Times, I have no idea what's happening. Like... All right, survival and wits. I'm rolling a whole one die. Is that all of us? Yep, everybody. Yeah. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not again. Oh. Nah, we're not, it's, it's just the failed this one. Is I'm not gonna... <laughs> How does it Blake, keep... on the other hand. How does this keep <laughs> happening? Well, when you roll one die, it's a lot easier. <laughs> but again, <laughs> we're... We're we're gonna ignore the beach fair. You're not really doing anything to, to sort of trigger that. Oh, okay, good. Terry's just hungry. Yeah. Paperwork. <laughs> Blake. As people have been perusing the the shelves, looking for in information on uh, people or, or groups of interest to them, you have been thinking about. No self-respecting vampire would have a bolt hole that has only one escape. And, you know, you're wandering around. And you haven't seen anything down here that would indicate there's another way out. And, you know, having ridden the elevator down, like, this is a fair way underneath the, the building. So... 
you know, there's, it would be hard to escape to anything from down here. But you think about the fact that the elevator ride took a little while and there is a hatch that could be removed from the elevator. And while everybody else is distracted, you go back to the elevator, you've got the key, and you take that hatch off. And as you look up the the uh, elevator shaft, you see there is, you know, sort of set into the wall, those, like, bar rungs that stick out from the wall. And you can just barely make out that about halfway up the, the tunnel, there seems to be a side passage. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Through the mountain. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to like peek my head in it a little bit more. See if I get a closer look. Okay. And let me check your uh, abilities again. Yes, yeah, so you have fairly high dexterity, not necessarily a lot of strength. But you also have some athletics. So yeah, you uh, leveraging just a little bit of your vampire abilities uh, very quickly ascend this this fixed ladder in the wall. And you get up to a, a passageway. It's, you know, narrow, but it's tall enough to, to walk down. And it goes about 15 feet. And you see that there is kind of a, a blank door. One of those metal, uh, almost like, uh, almost kind of like more like a submarine or sewer door. And as far as you can tell, it's unlocked. I open it. And when you open it, you see that it opens into a storage closet down in what looks like a boiler room. And the side of the door that you're opening has like a, a bar handle that you can, you know, flip up or down and, and open. But the other side looks just like a wall. Well, there's no obvious handle or anything on it. Do I hear anyone on the other side? You don't hear anyone. You do hear uh, equipment like HVAC, you know, air units, boiler, hot water heater, that, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh... And on, again, you found what is clearly supposed to be a hidden door. Yeah. Uh, and there's a door on the other side of the closet that opens, you you uh, suspect, opens out into, like, the sub-basement of the apartment building. Okay. Um. Okay. Do I see, like, any signs of, like, anyone being here at all? Recently if you, tracked, if you like, take just a minute, there's dust that's been moved around, like the floors are gross, and all of a sudden there's like you know a couple footprints in it, or like you know, I mean, I know like the systems will probably be like checked by maintenance people every now and then, but you know, there's any signs of recent activity. I mean, looking just in this sort of storage closet, like there's clearly stuff that really hasn't been moved or messed with in a while, like it's dusty in there but it looks like it'd be like going into any storage closet in a semi-industrial setting it's going to be not exactly clean but it does look used okay um I guess I'll, I'll go out to the next door and just see if I see, I mean, there's really no point because th this is the bottom of the basement. Like this is the basement of the apartment buildings. 
that's what you what you suspect. I mean, you know that you it was connected to the elevator shaft that was you know running sort of on the back wall of the of the apartment complex. Okay, so then I'm gonna start heading back. Uh, when I go to close the doors, do I see a way to lock it from like the secret wall door to make sure that no one can open the secret wall? Or is it like only open from the inside secret wall thing? You suspect there must be some way to get in from that direction, uh, but it seems pretty well hidden. There is, is the, there is a bar that can be put down across the the door. Okay, um, I'll make sure that it's locked, and I'll head back and let everyone know what I found. That way, we do know for sure that the elevator is called exits. Um, I mean, you know, through the hatch or just through the elevator, but there is another way to get in that's not just the elevator. Oh, hell yeah. Secret exit. That's good to know. All right, now I feel much more comfortable about sleeping here. All right, time. Yeah, we're going to take a nap. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, nap time. You guys I'm feel the lethargy time. starting to sort of set in. I'm cuddling with Alex. Come here, guy. We'll keep warm. I doubt it... that. <laughs> oh, sweet. Now Terry will have something to do when he gets up. Oh, he doesn't get to get up early anymore. Why? Because his humanity went down. Oh, did it? Yeah, I'm at seven now. Welcome to the cool kid. I remember celebrating that. <laughs> Not that you lost something, but that you joined the cool kid club. The cool kid club. I think I'm at six. I'm just, I'm going to miss waking up early. I enjoy doing that. Maybe you can wake up like two minutes earlier. <laughs> <laughs> just be the first one. All right, so you guys settle in for the, the morning. And, you know, the, the day passes as, uh, as rain and, uh, Alex, you know, or as Alex tries to find a place to, to lay down. Cause there's, <laughs> there's the one coffin. There's not like it's, there's cots around or anything. So the rest of you is just sort of doing makeshift, uh, places to, to lay down. But, uh. Alex starts to lay down and, t and rain comes over and starts to snuggle him. And as the, the life and vitality just drains out of you, we pan back and it looks like a scene from, you know, like a, I don't know, a, a raid of a camp or something where these two dried out and desiccated bodies are just embracing each other in, you know, an attempt to stave off the night, or in this case, the day. Aww. All day Aww. long. Blake, however, has somehow miraculously managed to, instead of looking like a desiccated, you know, dried out husk. Uh looks more like a a wax statue of Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, you know, slightly off putting, but way better shape than the rest of us. Well except for Terry. Terry looks almost like he's just asleep. Almost. <laughs> Sleeps with one eye open, gripping his pillow tight. Yep. And so exit night. All right. Well, guys, I think that's probably where I'm going to have to wrap it up for tonight. 
Damn it. We got so much lore. What are we doing right. next time? Like, what's our next goal? Well, we could eat. And then, uh... Are we going to the club to eat? I mean, we could go to one of these could, yeah, red Russian eat dots these to eat. Russian dots. This one's really close to the bodega. We should probably take care of that one. I'm down to try Russian. And as oh, for uh, Sunday, thank, oh, um, thank you, Ben, for running. No problem. Uh, I've ben, been looking forward to you guys getting the the info dump that was going to be Victor's place. Hell yeah, man! Oh, Ben, you mean sure our place? Ben do at level three. Yep, uh, I leveled up my party. Lucas is going to play his aunt. Amanda's going to play her mom. Jeremy's going to play... I got questions. A paladin of Zophiel. I have so what? many questions. Uh, Ryan Wait, what play. do you mean? The sun night thing. So Bask me in this nudeness. There was a ranger in that group and a, and a paladin in that group. So you can kind of decide what you want to play based off of that. I might go fighter. Okay. Well, tell me who's hanging out in Suyu. Uh, cause you and Summer kind of get some creative freedom, cause I couldn't come up with anybody. Or you could just play Amanda's brothers, which was an idea I had, but it's totally be fun. Cause uh, her brothers are definitely fighters. You want to be the one I almost beat? Oh, I was thinking of her older brothers. Oh, the scary one. Yeah. What? Ugh. I was just trying to think. Of, when did scary. you almost beat one of them? <laughs> I thought I, was say, I, I tried to slip that one in. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Arlen and Alinar, that the older brothers. <laughs> At this yeah, point, yeah, fought one of them. Well, yeah, but now they're older. Like, think about we're it. all older. Exactly. Well, I mean, they're going to be like almost well, forty. I'm going to be thirty. Another, like thirty or something. <laughs> No, I'm going to be 30. Oh, I am 30. No, they're going to be like 40. <laughs> they're going to be old. <laughs> hey, hey. What are you saying there? So, I'm kidding. It, that was an idea <laughs> if, if you wanted to play one of them, possibly. Or you could just make an OC if you want. Because uh, I was having a hard time coming up with two more characters, honestly. Um, so, you and Summer can help me? If you want. Amanda, you, you can make one too. You don't have to play your mom. Lucas is the only one that got a song character. Because he already made them all. So, you know, he has to play them all. I mean, I... Ben By the way, has I'm family. just trying to figure out what class I want her to be. I was thinking about adding Bindu's dad in there. Well, I've definitely got cousins too. Yeah, I mean, whoever you would have traveled with from Rahadum to Karhashon to study languages with at uh, at Jethro's aunt's, you know, place. That's my idea. Yeah. That's why Bindu's there. He's just there to study, and then Malia's going to get him into a bit of trouble. So when we do uh, Jethro's, uh, are, is that one going to... Take place in Rahadun? Yeah. Can I play my uncle then? Sure. Uh, uh, so, so Jeremy, do you already have a character you're necessary. playing? Okay, then I want. Uh, for uh, next week's, uh, for Sundays. Yes. Uh, for this Sunday's, yes. Okay, Ryan, do you have a character? Not yet. Then, uh, how about you be my troublemaking cousin? Who got sent along with me to study so that we could, you know, try to get him, you know, acceptable for the family. That could be fun. Well, so what what my what my idea was is that Malia's gonna get into like trouble and actually need to ask for help. And then Bindu's gonna go and get the help. And then everyone else is gonna be the help. So that's kind of where my, my brain was at. And I, I just had this image of like 
if I'm going to be the responsible, studious one, like, you know, I, I'm the one that, like, the family's like, oh, you should be like him. Then there's at least one cousin who's probably a punk, but would be good in a fight. Like Connie's cousin from King of the Hill. And I kind of just want to see Ryan play a punk. Yeah. <laughs> Could do that. It's up to you, Ryan. I'll browse some character art and get an idea. <laughs> Lucas is really the only one that got assigned a character, like I said. <laughs> oh, so we're retired adventurers? That's the idea, is that like... Can I be a baker as long, as well as being a priest? Yeah. But just yeah. like baking... Oh, no, people. no, we gotta draw the line somewhere. It's a small <laughs> town. Like, this town is small. So, yeah, it would make sense that you do multiple things. No, but like, I want my sweets to be like... Kind of like I win blue ribbons for these. Yeah, I'm just this giant. I, I'm sorry. No. If you're gonna, it, it's canon in in our games. If you're gonna play a baker, you have to make bagels. <laughs> it's true. You have to make bagels. I but just, he well, did evolve to pretzels by the end of the campaign. But why would anyone buy your pretzels if you don't make bagels? I want to make cupcakes. They need to. Bagel cupcakes? Oh, fuck. That sounds delicious. It's just a cupcake and bagel shape. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that called a donut? Oh, damn it. I make donuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, failure. <laughs> All right. Nobody am, will ever want these. I am the donut making paladin of Zophiel. I'm going for a protection. Um. Uh, I can't remember the order where like oh no my dude got my buddy got hit me and him are going to swap places sure I'm, that I'm one. playing one of, I can't I think it's Oath of not Brotherhood Freaky Friday Freaky. Oath of Freaky Friday okay are you guys going to be around for like another oh I don't know five minutes sure yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll be right back 30 times or actually, what should we what should oh. we name this lair? The library? No. The archives. Wait. Is is Jethro's story gonna take place with the Wizards of High Sorcery? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. I do want to make me an old ass wizard? fucking love playing it's not even magic i just love the aesthetic of old ass wizards with big we ass long party of all wizards for that <laughs> oh my god yes <laughs> that's actually not a bad idea <laughs> no it's fucking sick at least a party of all casters oh i am oath of brotherhood where did i bro. go bro bro so you took your broth? I took my broth. <laughs> yeah, I took my broth, bro. 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 I actually don't know where Oath of Brotherhood is from. It's just in the campaign. Well, hey, I'm glad I did the stream for this. Oh, it's a homebrew class. Now, if there's anything that we forget about the, the lore dump, we, we've got it recorded. <laughs> <laughs> we can just be like, go back and watch that one. What's Oath of Watchers? Is that an actual one or is 